Before we talk about Vuex and authenticating a user and storing all that information in our Vuex store, let's swap this out for a form that we can actually use to submit. So the action here we don't need. We are just going to add a uh, submit hook onto this and we're going to reference a submit method which we're going to create. Prevent will prevent the default behavior of this, e.g. we don't want this to submit through to another page, we just want to access the data when this form is submitted. So uh, let me just indent this and create our a methods object in here, and we're going to create a submit method in here, and I'm just going to do a console log and say submitted. So once we fill this form out and we submit it, we should see that console log out there. Okay, so I'm going to keep this really, really simple. I'm going to create a label in here for the email address, and that's just going to have the text email inside of it. And we're going to have an input in here, of course, for the type of text or type of email, depending on if you want uh, client side validation without any JavaScript. And this is just going to have a name of email and an ID of email like so. And we can do the same thing here pretty much for the password. So let's switch this up to password. And of course the type here is also going to be password and switch this over as well, like so. Last thing we want in here is just a button with a type of submit. So let's add that in here and let's just say sign in, great. So we've now got the ability to enter an email address, enter a password, and like I said before, hit sign in and see that submitted console logged. And even if we are uh, in the form and we hit enter, that's still going to go ahead and log that out. So that's why we added the submit event handler and prevented the default behavior. So inside of here, we want to hook this up to some data. If you're new to Vue.js, basically what this means is we have a, in fact, that should be a method. From this method, we return an object. And in here, we can add, say, form object and have the email and the password locally stored within this component. And we can hook these up. So we can say v model form.email. And we can say v model form.password. Now, if we just dump this on the page, so if we dump that form data on the page, that will just basically keep up to date with this. So anything that we type in here, means that's locally stored and we can go ahead and send that through to our API. So what we want to do then is using that data that we now have in our form, here is where we want to send the API request to the back end. We're not just going to go ahead and do this all inside of this submit method because we need some central store, e.g. Vuex, to store our token and our user information. So what we're going to do is first of all go ahead and install Axios. So let's just create up a new tab here go into code tutorials, view auth, and into the client. I'm gonna do an npm install on Axios and save that. Now Axios is a promised based HTTP client for Node and JavaScript. So that will just allow us to start to send requests through to our API. So we can play around with this in here by going ahead and importing Axios from Axios and just seeing what happens when we send a request through to our API. Then we'll shift this over and move this to our Vuex store. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this submit method asynchronous so we can wait for the response back from the API before we do anything else. And I'm just gonna create a response variable here and I'm gonna say axios.post. I'm gonna post through to the URL for our API. And we know that that is, uh, if we just go back to our terminal, the following URL just here. Now we're going to see an issue with cores, which we'll fix up in just a minute. And we'll talk about that. But let's just pop that entire URL in here and say API slash auth slash sign in. And we want to send some data across with this as well, which is just going to be this form. So we're going to send the email and the password along with that request, much like we did within Postman. And then down here, once that request is finished, I'm just going to log the response data and just see what we get back. So let's see what happens by typing in my email address, typing in, let's just put in a random password and see what happens. So the first thing you'll notice is we get an error here because we don't have cores set up on our API properly. So that's one thing that we probably should have done when we set up our uh, API. So let's head over to our 
API under our project. So view auth slash API. And let's go ahead and install Laravel cores just to get this working. So I'm not going to dive too much into cross origin resource sharing, uh, but I'm going to pull in this Laravel cores package just to get this working. So let's come over to our terminal and install this. This will basically just give us the ability to specify which origins are allowed to access and send requests to our API. Uh, so let's wait for this to finish. And all we need to do to get this set up is add in this middleware to our kernel. So if we come back over to our editor, come over to API and just open up our kernel, which is in HTTP directory. Let's just add this to our overall middleware stack. And let's come back over to the terminal and just wait for this to download. Okay, so that package is all pulled in. Let's go back over to our client and retry this request. I'm not going to dive into uh, the theory behind cores, but you can go ahead and check out that package to see exactly what it does and how to configure it as well. So let's go ahead and just put in any old rubbish password in here and send this request across. And sure enough, that has sent a network request and we get back a 401 unauthorized because I've entered the incorrect password. Let's try this again, but use the correct password, which is just password, if I can type it properly, and we'll send this across again. So you can see here we get a 200 OK, and sure enough, we get that token back. So the next step is to take this token. We want to store this inside of a Vuex store module, specifically for our authentication. And then we also want to put this into local storage. So we need to set up a couple of hooks within our Vuex store. If you're new to Vuex, then the next couple of parts should hopefully clear this up. But at least now what we've done is set up Axios, made a request through to our application, and we're actually seeing the data back from our API. Now, I guess there's one last thing I want to do. Over in main.js, I just want to set up the base URL for Axios. So this will mean if we just import Axios inside of here, we can do Axios defaults and we can set the base URL to the URL that we're sending a request to over here. What that means is if we take all of this, we can just do posts to things like auth sign in because our API is more or less always going to be the same. We're only accessing one API. So by doing this, we're just shortening the code that we post elsewhere. So again, let's just do a log on the response data that we get back and let's head back over and resend this across. So that looks like it's working. If I just go ahead and send that request in there again, we get 200 back with our token. So that just tidies up wherever we're using axios.post or get or whatever else. We just set the base URL in there. Brilliant. So let's move over to the next part and look at moving all of this over to our Vuex store so we can actually store this token for any subsequent requests that we make.